After completing the old tally track yesterday, we made our way here to the Jardine River Ferry Crossing. Now, we would have passed on through last night, but we, we arrived at nine minutes past six and they shut down at six o'clock. So if you do want to catch that ferry, make sure you're here before six or you'll be camping over here where we did. Now, today we're going to push on through to Punsan Bay, have a quick break there, and then we're going to head on to the tip of the Australian continent. At some point overnight, some backburning had started and we woke to see smoke blanketing the Jardine River and our campsite, providing the most amazing morning glow. After a good feed and sleep, we were ready to take off again. The ferry reopens at 7am sharp. The Jardine River Ferry is not only an essential trip for four-wheel drivers to get to the tip of the Australian continent, it's also essential to get anything north of the river to the remote communities living up there. At $100 a vehicle return, it's also one of the most expensive ferry rides in Australia, especially if you consider that we aren't travelling more than 50 metres in total. Depending on the tides, the river can get very deep in some areas and crocs are regularly spotted lurking in the river's shadows. Cost about eight bucks a minute. No, sorry, eight bucks a second. <laughs> After disembarking the ferry, it's only a short drive on to Bamaga and then another short drive to Punsan Bay from there. Our plan at this point was to relax for a few hours at Punsan Bay, then make our way to the tip this afternoon to take advantage of the golden hour, which is fantastic for photography and videography, and then make our way back down south to start Frenchman's Track tomorrow morning. Punsan Bay is an absolutely brilliant place to unwind, especially after nine days in the driver's seat over some hellish roads. It can feel like you're a million miles away from anywhere, and especially the stress of civilization. It's just great out here, and everyone should visit as they pass through. Punsan Bay has all the amenities you need to relax and unwind. The only unfortunate thing about Punsan Bay, which is much like North Queensland everywhere really, is the threat of crocs. I mean, the water just looks so good. It's very tempting to just jump in. And the odd dumbass has. After some rest, we would reconvene at 4pm and head to the tip of the Australian continent, otherwise known as Pajinka. It was a unanimous feeling among us all that the rest and the opportunity for some quiet time to ourselves definitely came at a good time. Yeah. 4pm rolled around pretty quickly, so we grabbed our supplies and cameras and excitedly made our way to the tip. Let's hit it. guys out of 2,000 probably 800 odd I reckon because we took that detour yeah come to this feeling excited very excited all right we're very close it's about a 30 minute drive from Punsan Bay to Pajinka but once you get to the car park, you still have a bit of a trek of about five or 10 minutes north to get to the spot with the sign. So after a short rest at Punsan Bay, we decided to come down to Pajinka, which is the tip of the Australian continent. We're parked there at the car park. We've got a little walk around there, and then we get to take our photo with that famous sign. We're all pretty G'd, and yeah, so let's hit it. The walk north from the car park to the tip is a pretty easy one and it's hard to miss. As we rocked up at the car park, there wasn't another soul in sight and we were stoked because we were gonna have the place to ourselves, right? Wrong. As we approached the tip, we climbed over a few rocks expecting to see an isolated sign there, only to see an entire boatload of grey-haired nomads from a cruise ship that had beat us to it. We didn't mind though, everyone has a right to see that sign and we were honestly so happy to share our experience and space with some lovely people. It was a great time to share our stories of adventure and speak to some different faces as well.
We started our journey in Cooktown, obviously named after Captain Cook. His crew were forced to spend 48 days there making repairs to the Endeavour in 1770 after it had run aground on a local reef. Once Cook and his crew were happy with the repairs, he set off north again to chart the Cape York Peninsula and all this way gathering cartographic evidence that New Holland was in fact its own continent. 1770 might seem like a very long time ago to some people, but this region has been inhabited for at least 60,000 years by the local Aboriginal communities and their ancestors. These ancient Aboriginal communities would hunt, fish and gather and hold all sorts of traditional ceremonial meetings in the region. And it's amazing that they had such little impact on the land over that great period of time. I'm sure you can all imagine that we were so happy and relieved to have made it all the way to the tip of Australia. We took the hardest, longest way possible and we've had no major issues. We're all safe and most of all, we we're enjoying this very special moment. So obviously this journey couldn't have happened in the two vehicles that we have, the Torpedo and the Black Knight, if it wasn't for the good nature of the men next to me, Mitch to my left, Sam to my right. And I just want to ask you guys, firstly, Sam, what does it mean for you to be here standing at the tip of the Australian continent? Oh, everything, man. It's, um, I think it's on every four-wheel driver's bucket list um, to get to this spot. It's so, it's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. It's excellent, isn't it? So good. Yeah. Would you uh, come back again? Definitely. Definitely coming back again. I think it's one of those places that will keep drawing us all back once you've been here once. Mitch. You grew up in New Zealand, came to Australia when you're 17. What does it mean for you to be standing at the Australian tip of the Australian continent? Um, well, a lot really. Like, I've never been here before at all, so it's really nice to get up here. It's more about the journey more than the destination, I think, and the journey um, added to with the present company. You know, it's been a chance of a lifetime and amazing. Um, seen some things you don't really, well only a handful of people get to see and um, experience in a way that really no one has. So I'm stoked. You've also uh, taken a real shine to this way of life. Mitch is a beginner in four wheel driving and um, certainly chats in the evening time. He's looking forward to buying a, a cruiser when he gets home, I think. Is that true, Mitch? Yeah, range is gone. Um, <laughs> range is gone, cruise is coming. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right, thank you so much, guys. It couldn't happen without you support Thank great you, driving man. and um, yeah see you all next time guys Frenchman's track next when one stands on the tip of the Australian continent it is a massively surreal experience not only do you think about the rest of the Australian continent hanging around this massive region south of you but the cultural historical and geographical significance of this place is incredible it's a great place to connect to the ancient heart of our beautiful country. Yeah, I want to say something. So, everyone who comes here, comes here to take a photo of themselves with this sign here. All that effort, all that expense, all that travel for this sign right here. And also what this sign represents. It's hugely symbolic. And I think everyone should do it. Oh. So do it! Do it! <laughs> After a lovely afternoon of hanging out at this very special location, darkness beckoned. So we made our way back to the car park and on to Punsan Bay, where we had a well-earned dinner and a good old yarn about our day. Although it might not seem like it, our adventure wasn't over quite yet. We have always intended to try and complete Frenchman's track, if the time permitted. We studied the maps closely and decided that with the good weather forecast and the four days we had to get back to Cairns, we would have enough time to give Frenchman's a red hot go. But for now, we were just happy to reflect on making it to the northernmost tip of the Australian continent, something we all felt we could be extremely proud of. A feat that we'll all talk about to the end of our days. Hey, well done.